Hello guys, welcome in my hangar. This is RC Shim and I just want to give you a small update on what I'm doing. I had a few days off now and had time to fly the Arkberg autopilot on the XUAV one more, which was fun. And just finished swapping the motors on the Vortex because a few weeks ago I had a crash I think that one prop broke in mid air and so it crashed into a field motors were dirty and two of the four motors didn't sound too good I used the stock motors until then 2204 KV300s <coughs> I'm quite sure that those are multi-star here I got the Multistar Elite. They also have V-Spec titled. They are just one millimeter higher. They are 2205. They have 2350 kVs. So a bit more power. I can give you a link in the description for to this. Uh, swapping the motors was not too hard. I mean it's some soldering involved. I will show you how easy it is to change the motor directions on the Vortex. That's the fun part with these ECs. So I have to change this direction. On a normal quad I would have to resolder now two cables. On this one with the RotorSense, it's in the ESC firmware, which detects the rotation you do manually. And if you repeat it twice, it will store this new direction. So that's the easiest way to change motor directions without any programming. Or whatsoever. So so you have to do it really quick, a first and a second time to acknowledge it and then it will beep to confirm. If I power up now, yeah, it's in the correct direction. 5 by 4 with 3 blades. Those are the non-bull nose props. The bullnose versions from the DYS, I don't trust them so much anymore since they broke in mid air. And I have to empty the batteries because I charged them two or three weeks ago and that's not a good thing. I love this road. Speed run. Really lovely. It's maybe one kilometer. Because our field is 500 meters long. This testing here is also done with the Runcam R+. Plus. Uh, the cam is maybe overshooting the bright parts a bit too much. But the clouds look impressive. Oh god, I missed this. So yeah, the new motors, I think they work fine. You can, you should and you have to in interfere with your 
surroundings, but not too much. Just the right amount. I love how it handles. Cam, uh, it's not a CCD, but it's okay. Ay, caramba. Okay guys, here's a little recap after flying the XUV-1. This bird here. On my later flights I mounted the run cam up on top. Not only with the rubber band, but also with some velcro on the bottom. Let me show you what is my setup. Of course I fly with the large tripod. With the receiver up there and the long cable to the fat chucks. I'm recording on the fat chucks. And there's a backup monitor and while, whilst, while hand throwing it myself, I use this monitor. So I throw it in the air, see if I get a stable course, then run back to this monitor, watch, watch the video there if I'm flying good. And if it, everything is fine, I put on the goggles. So this worked pretty well, the last two flights. Well, let's say the last one and a half flights. First flight was over there to the mountain I even uh, managed to get some thermals. I mean, not really much because this is a heavy bird, but I saw the height, uh, the height increasing without throttle on. So that's. Of course, if you really want to thermal slopes or something like this, you get a proper plane for this. Um, so the first flight was okay. The second flight, I wanted to go down, down in this direction. And this is with, with headwind, which is a good way to start. But uh, suddenly I felt that my up elevator authority was low. And then I looked on the amperage and even on full throttle I only got like five, six, seven amps. And so I knew that the, the motor shaft was loose on the gear once again. But this last landing was, was quite close because I had no power left and I was yeah, quite far out. I had to fly as good as I could with the wind, but I didn't want to land with the wind. So I flew the round, only had a few more meters left. And could uh, land it fine and safe uh, against the wind, which is better with this plane. I will just file down the motor shaft a bit, that it has more grip on it. So as this gear here is loose on the motor shaft, you can hear the sound of the greased gears without the motor involved. It doesn't sound too bad at all. But as a short conclusion about my flying with the FPV plane the last two days, it is fun and it is an adventure to fly high up with a bird and be able to soar down. Uh, you can fly longer, you can see more, 
but yeah, it sounds um, much more complicated for me. You have to choose the right spot where you can start and of course where you can land it. You have to consider the landing approach, especially on the XUV1 which tends to stall if you make something wrong. Flying and landing mini quads is just so much fun and yeah. The downsides of this is you only have like five minutes. With the XUV1 I could have flown half an hour easily. The other thing I ordered is the XUV Mini Talon. It's like $50 on Banggood. And it looks like the Mini Talon is the better choice as a cool and versatile FPV plane. So I will transfer the gear from the. not the gears. <laughs> not the gears, I don't like the gears. I will transfer the stuff from the XUV1 to the XUV Mini Talon. Um, I really liked how the Arcbird flew and once you get the vibrations down uh, the autopilot actually does a good job of stabilizing the thing and flying it well. So looking forward to build this XUV Talon, Mini Talon, do more and easy FPV flights with it. I almost forgot to show you this little cable I got sent in today. It's from Winner Gear. I did a review once for them, the Monta, which was this smartphone stand. And now they sent me this funny looking cable. The cool thing is you can plug in the USB lead, whatever way you want. It's symmetrical. You can also plug in this micro USB lead, whatever way you want. That means uh, it works kind of like this iPhone 6 cable. Minus the iPhone cable cannot be plugged in either way on the USB side. So if this really works, it's a nice cable. Uh, I guess its name is MIG Flip for micro and flip it either side. Yeah. I will also give you a link to this if I find something. Yeah, and thanks for companies like Winner Gear to just send me stuff without request. Uh, I'm happy to review them as long as they fit somehow in my channel. Like this cable you would need for your firmware upgrades and stuff. Okay, so leave me some comments if you have questions or if you have some feedback. I like this. Uh, how do you like this shaky cam setup? No, that's, it was just an, an instantaneous video I wanted to do. Thanks for watching.